Good evening, gentlemen. Um, this uh, this is just kind of a random stream. I might cut the highlights together into a YouTube video to put on the Vintage Computer Federation forums to see if I can get any advice on any of this. But um, I've been head scratching today some about uh, about how to make a memory interface for the Q bus because I think it would be fun to. Um, Try to make a uh, memory card for um, for the H11 uh, sometime. Let me zoom out there. There. Uh, so this is the um, this is the PDP11 bus handbook uh, from 1979, I think, um, or at least the last half of it that deals with the Q bus rather than the Uni bus. Um, and this this is a this is an older edition of the book. It um, it doesn't uh, detail the 22-bit uh, Cubus stuff, but that might be good because um, that means it will be less to wrap our heads around. And the um, the the Cubus appears to be very 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 similar to the. Um, Motorola 68000 in that it's uh, it's asynchronous, um, so we don't have we don't have a system clock uh, keeping everything well synchronized. Uh, so that that makes some of the bus timing a little funny. But I think um, I think as far as slave devices, it doesn't look like the timing's quite uh, quite as critical. Um, and the, the Q bus, unlike the Unibus, also uh, multiplexes address and data over the same lines. All right, so um, uh, hang on a second. Here somewhere. Oh, I guess it's this sideways page that I was trying not to look at. So yeah, it's got um, it has 18 data and address lines, and um, that uh, that allows it to address what 256k words. No, uh, just 256k, I guess. Um, of course, when it's um, when that part of the bus is in use for data, only the first 16 bits are used, and um, bits 17 and 18 are used uh, used to signal parity, memory parity, which is optional, so we won't use that, I don't think. Um, I want to use uh, 512k um, by 8 Alliance SRAMs, uh, you know the ones I'm talking about. They use it all. They use them on a lot of these um, modern old computer memory cards. They use them on the the low tech uh, the low tech memory card. There um, and a bunch of other shit. Uh, but since um since an 18 bit Q bus can only address uh, 256k and a 16 bit Q bus like the LSI. Uh, slash uh, so LSI 11 slash 02 can only address um, 64k. Um, that's kind of a waste because uh, the bus is 16 bits wide, so we have to use two of those chips. So we're going to have a megabyte of RAM no matter what. Um, but I thought um, I thought it might be kind of cool at, in, syst in uh, 16 and 18 bit systems, uh, or to allow. Um, uh, that like small small pages of that upper memory that can't be directly addressed um, to be mapped into uh, somewhere in, um, uh, in 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 the I/O bank bank seven the the, the PDP eleven is entirely um, uh, memory mapped it doesn't have I/O ports the way uh, the way that a lot of uh, CPUs that we're used to do it's it's very much like the uh, 68,000 in that regard, and the 6502. Um, so the, the, the upper, the upper bank um, in the within the lower 64k, I think it is. They call it bank seven. Um, 
I may be wrong about its location in the memory map, but it's it's somewhere in there. That's that's the the I/O space. Um, so it's just treated like any other memory. The bus is asynchronous, so like um, slow peripherals act like slow memory. You know what I'm saying? So we could we could have a couple of locations up there in bank seven that we could write to to select which um, which little chunk of that upper memory we wanted to map into the next, you know, like, I don't know, so many bytes, and then you could treat that little block as a section and then map in something else and do something with it. And it might be, um, it might be handy to use for, like, fast swap space and stuff like that, you know, I don't know, just something to, something to do with all that extra RAM, right? Uh, but anyway, so, like, uh, there's a timing diagram back here that um, talks about how all of this works. So uh, the um, the 18 lines that are used for address and data they call those DAL. Uh, everything appears to be active low as well, even even the address and data. So I assume that like all highs on address and data would mean like all zeros uh, is the way I'm reading that. Uh, so that's that's kind of like the um, TRS-80 Model 2 in that regard. Uh, so um, it looks like uh, when it starts a bus cycle um, the bus master or the CPU, we can just say the CPU, um, puts the address that it wants to access uh, on the uh, data and address lines. I assume that's what DAL stands for. Um, along with some other some other some other signals, uh, there's one that indicates that it's whether it's an 8-bit or a 16-bit write. It always does 16-bit reads, but it's possible to write um, either the upper or lower byte by itself. And um, it also has this uh, this BS7 line, that's bank select 7, um, that is only asserted when it's accessing the I.O. space. So that, um, that simplifies address decoding for, um, for like non-memory peripherals, I suppose. So, um, and then it waits it puts the address and, and these other control lines, it asserts the address and these other control lines, and then it waits a little bit for those lines to settle, and then it asserts this sync line, um, which despite the diagram is also active low, I think. Um, I'm going to have to, assuming one of my CPU cards work, I'm going to have to put my, um, uh, uh, oh jeez, what is wrong with my brain tonight? Too much farm work and not enough fun. I'm gonna to have to put my, um, my, my, my 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 analyzer on that uh, and see um, if I'm full of shit about that or not. And then um, it waits a little bit for the peripheral, the slave device, to latch that address and these couple of control lines into its internal logic because the address is going to get cleared from these DAL lines then um, in the next part of the bus cycle and replaced with the data, whether that be data um, written to the slave device by the master or read from the slave device by the master, like the slave device would be putting it on the bus in that case. Um, so the, the slave device has to latch the address that the bus master has given it into its own logic um, so that it can um, do its address decoding properly. And um, then uh, a minimum of 100 nanoseconds later, there isn't any other signal that tells for the, um, for the peripheral to tell the bus master uh, when it's gotten that data latched, it just has to be fast enough to latch it within 100 nanoseconds, it appears, which is which is plenty of time. But then with some time, um, 100 nanoseconds later, uh, the, um, the bus master 
inputs. Let's see. This is a this is an input bus cycle. So that the put well. Uh, that's that's the wrong diagram. We're, we're looking for a for a write. Yeah, that's a data output. Um, so then, um, sometime later, uh, on, a, on a write cycle, the bus master will put the data um, on these same lines, these DAL lines, and then assert this D out line telling the peripheral that the data on the bus is valid and then the peripheral triggers on the rising edge of that the, of that data out strobe um, and does whatever it's going to do with the data um, maybe that's latching it into its internal stuff uh, if it's real slow or just writing it to memory if it's something fast but in any case when when the peripheral has read the data then it asserts this reply line saying I have read the data and um, after it asserts this reply line the bus master can drop um, this uh, data output line and um, the uh, the DAL part of the bus can become undefined at that point, but as long as um, as long as the slave asserts that reply line, it has all the time that it needs uh, to do what it wanted to do with this data um, that it that that was written to it. And then when it's finished, it uh, it, uh, it it releases the reply line, and then the bus master releases the sync line and the bus cycle is complete so there's no clock in this it's all it's all done with these handshaking lines apparently which is um, which is kind of interesting and likewise uh, the uh, on, a, on a on a data input cycle that was a write this will be a a, re, um, a read from the memory um, it asserts this D in line instead of a D out line, and then sometime later, the uh, the slave puts data on the bus, and it's not it's not immediately apparent to me how the master how the slave tells the master device the bus master when the data that it's presenting to the bus is valid so that the bus master can latch that data into its internal registers. I don't immediately understand how it's doing that. Uh, I'll have to do further reading about that. So that's pretty critical. That's a spot that I've got that I've got a mental fuck up on here. Um, but if we can figure that out, it looks like the rest of the the, um, the, the input bus cycle uh, works works very similar to the output bus cycle, right? So and then this um, this uh, this uh, WTBT right byte uh, strobe. It tells it to, that it's only going to be writing to either the upper or the lower eight bits of the 16-bit data bus, and then I assume that the um, the A0 of the address, the, the 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 least significant bit of the address that's been was put latched on on here uh, earlier, um, is what's used to determine whether the um, high eight bits or the low eight bits of the memory bank are written to. You know what I'm saying? So that that seems pretty pretty straightforward, but I still don't understand how the slave tells the bus master that the data that it's presenting to the bus is stable and ready to be latched. I don't see a signal here because um, the DN is asserted by the bus master, and then. And then the slave asserts a reply. I guess the surely the data isn't latched by the falling edge of 
the slave asserting a reply, is it? That would be a little funny, but then I guess the bus cycle's still in progress until sync drops, so the, okay, so the, the data gets latched into the bus master on the falling edge of reply from the slave, and then the bus master signals that it has finished latching this data by dropping by dropping sync and finishing the bus cycle. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense. I think. Alright. 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 That's good. And there are some other funny bus cycles. Um, here are the different... No, 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 no. Ah, yes. Here are the different types of bus cycles that can happen on the Q bus. That's, um, it can do a, 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 a it can read an entire word it can write an entire word it can uh, it can output only a byte the reads are always 16 bits but um, it can it can output either a word or a byte um, and then it has these uh, this 16 bit read modify rate uh, bus cycle and a um, 8 bit uh, read modify rate bus cycle and I haven't studied up on those but I assume that it just plays with DN and D out while holding sync asserted uh, for those in which case like the logic used for like regular input or output cycles would function for um, read modify write bus cycles so here's a yeah, yeah, that's that's all it's doing. There's a um, timing diagram of the read, modify, write cycles, and it just um, it asserts DN, reads the data, then it, it's it, yeah, it's just like it's just like doing a, a read a read cycle and then a write cycle without um, dropping the master uh, control signals. Um, uh, and starting a new bus cycle, so that looks um, that looks straightforward enough, I think, at first at first glance. Um, it helps me understand these a little better if I um, if I instead of looking at their timing diagrams, if I um, if I read through the description of the bus cycle and make my own timing diagram. That seems to that seems to assist with visualizing this shit. But so, um, so, to build a memory interface, uh, on the Q bus, we would need to, Yeah, we'd, we'd just go ahead and put some, some like, 8-bit registers across the DAL lines and the right byte line and the BS7 line. And we would always latch those on the rising edge of sync, regardless of whether it was an output cycle or an input cycle, right? Yes, and then... Right, so... So we have... We'd have DAL, the whole bus, 0 through, what is it, 18? No, 0 through 17. It's an 18 bit bus. Duh. Um, going into a bank of latches, I'll just draw those as a D flip flop. Right. And then those would get clocked by the falling edge, the falling edge of sync since it's active low, I think. Right? And then we'd have our address latched there. Then, uh, 
Then we can do our address decoding. We can just make it as a black box. And that will give us some kind of chip enable output. Get out of here, bug. That'll give us some kind of chip enable output because the AS the AS6C 4008, I think that's the part number, it uh, it has a chip enable, um, a write enable, and an output enable, three separate control lines. So you have to assert chip enable and write enable to write to the chip, and chip enable and output enable to read from the chip. Um, so it's two lines. So we can just run this into chip enable, and then we ought to just be able to, um, to run uh, D in and D out. So um, an output, an input to the bus master is going to hit uh, output enable on the memory, um, on the memory chip, and the, that will hit write enable on the memory chip and okay so the chip enable decoding gets a little bit more complicated though because we're going to have to let uh, that the, the right byte line we're going to have to latch that somewhere too and it'll go into more decoding along with uh, along with uh, A0 from here so this is yeah I, I, I drew that messy. That that was stupid. Um, and then that'll um, that'll produce like an upper chip enable and a lower chip enable um, for each uh, 500 for each one megabyte of RAM. So we'll have like a UCE zero and an LCE zero and a UCE one and an LCE one, etc., down to three, and that'll be four megabytes of RAM using 512k by eight SRAMs, right? And then uh, the the latches, um, the the these these CMOS um, SRAMs are uh, are low enough power that fucking bug cat eat the bug. Get him. Get him. Good kitty. Um, so what was I talking? All right. So the, those those CMOS SRAMs um, aren't going to s like be trying to sink a whole shitload of current. So all of these latches and um, decoding circuitry and shit should be um, sufficient to buffer these bus signals. So we, we don't. I don't think we technically need any bus drivers here. Um, we might need we might need to buffer these since there will be like um, eight chips there. I'll ha I'll have to read. Th th these ought to be able to drive the the DN and DL lines. They ought to be able to drive several TTL loads though. Um, and a CMOS load is like thirty t uh, like thirty yeah uh, a C thirty CMOS loads is like a TTL load or something like that. I I'm pulling that out of my ass, but. Yeah, that, that may not need to be buffered with these modules. Surely not. Um, but then the, we'll have to buffer the data lines. Um, and the, the, the Q bus, the Q bus is, uh, I don't think, um, I don't think it uses uh, exactly the same voltages for um, what constitutes what logic levels as. There's a reason that they used those those funny uh, DS six thousand 
DL8641 bus drivers, it's like a a, 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 a 1 is like 1.2 volts or something like that. So I don't know, um, I don't know if we can use like regular LS245s as data bus line drivers or not. Um, I mean, those those bus drivers interface typically to a bunch of TTL shit on these Q bus boards, so you'd think that they could that they'd be able to interoperate with each other, right? So, I mean, maybe an LS245 would be sufficient. I guess we can try it and see what happens. I'll, I need to do a little more reading on that anyway. Um, but in any case, there will be a... Uh, these dowel lines will also have to break off and go through these buffers. These tri-state buffers, line drivers. And um, everything, this will this will just go straight to the data lines on the on the chips, right? Um, but the um, the enable lines on these buffers will have to be controlled by um, these lines and the decoded address for the entire card, which I guess if it's a whole 4 megabyte card, that doesn't matter. So, yeah, and we want to, we don't want, yeah, we want to, we want to factor BS7 into this. That's the I.O. That's the I.O. bank. Um, because we don't want we don't want the memory to do anything when the bus master accesses the I.O. segment, right? Yeah. Hmm. What do you guys think? I don't know what to think. I'm dumb. Right, Mr. Fluffles, did you eat that bug? Was he a tasty bug? Huh? Was he a tasty bug? Are you a good boy? You are a good boy. Yes, sir. <sighs> you know what I'm going to do? I have somewhere here. That looks kind of like a memory board, doesn't it? Ah, yes, I have. I have the manual for the um, those memory expansion modules that are in the H11, and I think I'll just go ahead. I should have done this before I even farted around with this video. I think, but I'm going to go ahead and read the um, circuit description part of this part of this manual and uh, see what it's doing about. Um, BS7. Although this is a f this is a 4K card, so it's yeah. I guess the way that, that these cards avoid trampling on BS7 is to just not be jumpered for BS7. So that's not going to tell us much, is it? Ah, uh, I'll figure something out. I'll um, I'll uh, plug some shit into uh, a circuit simulator and and see what happens. And that brings. That brings us to another question, all right? So, all of this stuff, these latches and, and the decoding circuitry and, and the, maybe the buffers, maybe, probably not, but maybe the buffers. No, the, the buffers will definitely have to be separate chips because that's going to have to drive a bunch of TTL loads when the, when the memory is trying to um, put data onto the bus and everything else on the bus is syncing it. Um, so yeah, we'll have to have buffers on the for data output. But other than that, um, we could probably do all of this in like a, a CPLD, like a, 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 a ATF uh, 1502 or whatever they are, or maybe even like old school GALS or something. Although the, the the ones that you can program with a JTAG program are a hell of a lot more useful in my opinion. I mean, less of a pain in the ass anyway. Um, but. Um, in a way, that's kind of um, 
that's kind of cheaty and I'm not very good at making PAL equations anyway. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking it would be fun to try to build the son of a bitch with like discrete logic, you know what I'm saying? Um, 8-bit uh, edge triggered registers and um, like old school like 7400 series TTL stuff. I think that would be fun. What do you guys think I should do? Sorry for the long ramble. Uh, I'm going to play with the cat now. Thanks for joining.